Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here. Welcome to Mondays with Mr. Happy, aka Mr. Happy Mondays, the weekly Q&A show where you ask me questions, I answer them. I feel like that was a little off. I feel like I said the same thing twice. I don't know. My brain has been completely fried this entire weekend. I've just got Pokemon on the brain. So with that, in the, with that out of the way, videos here at the bottom. I've got a few of them in there. Uh, one regarding the live letter, uh, new bestiary, a few other things we got going on there. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's been a pretty. It's been a pretty interesting week in terms of gaming. Uh, played a lot of Twin Saga after the sponsored video that came out, and I've been playing Pokemon all weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. My entire stream has been dedicated to Pokemon. I'm like, like my Pokemon are around level 50-ish right now. Most of the Pokemon I'm fighting are around 40. So it's been a good time, though. I've enjoyed this Pokemon game. I do have my, my gripes about it, especially the whole call for help mechanic. But it's been getting better. Uh, but with that out of the way, we got quite a few questions to get through on the forums. We had a lot last week. Let's just dive right into those. I do have some Twitch live questions to do this week. All right, first question. Hey, Mr. Happy. First time poster here, so I have two questions for you. But go ahead and pick one if you're short on time. Well, it's the first question, so it's hard to know if I'm short on time at this point. Uh, one, I currently play on the PS4 and plan on going tank for Stormblood, but given they have limited ability slots due to action parts, I don't think you do. I, I, that, you do not have limited action space, action bar space on the PS4. You have 16 buttons on the base, and then you have 16 buttons ac accessible with, uh, with the expanded hotbar, and then the double cross hotbars give, gives you another... I think eight buttons. I think you can get it up to sixteen buttons, right? Yeah, you can get yeah, you can get up to another sixteen. I don't think you have limited space at all. I don't think that's a viable thing to be worried about. Um, do you have any tips for being able to increase my movement while on PC? I don't think you need to switch to PC. I don't think that's a. I don't think that what you think is a problem. I don't think is a problem. So I mean, I don't. I think you're overthinking this. You have plenty. If anything, you have more ability slots that are easily accessible on the PS4 controller, at least even from my experience with the Healer Happy series, uh, I always felt like I have way more buttons at my hand when I'm playing on the PS4 controller. It's just not as comfortable for me in terms of um, reaching those abilities because I'm not as seasoned with that. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, practice makes perfect if you really want to switch to PC, but I don't think this is a problem. Um, two... Let's see, let's scroll down. As I currently have only one tank at 60, when I have tank level 60 dungeons, I'm still relatively new and, I'm, and I am uncomfortable with mass pulls. Even though mass pulls have been preferred to uh, small to medium pulls, so I can make sure I keep all the amity and not lose the EVS. Do you have any suggestions on how to increase my pull amounts, gear, and making sure you're using cooldowns? That's all it is. When you do big pulls, you don't want to do a big pull and literally have no cooldowns. You want to make sure you're spacing your cooldowns. Also, Check the composition of the party and the gear of the DPS. Like, if you have Ninja, Ninja, Paladin, Scholar, you probably don't want to mass pull because that's awful for AoE DPS unless they're super over gear. And meanwhile, if you're, like, Warrior, White Mage, Summoner, Bard, or Summoner, Black Mage, then, yeah, you know you're just, just the biggest pulls. Use a stronger cooldown or use a cooldown that'll last longer so you know that they can get through all the pull with you only using one, maybe two cooldowns. But that's all it is. All you're doing is you're just spacing out your cooldowns. It's pretty much the equivalent of when you're fighting a boss and you need a cooldown for each of the big, big single target hit attacks on the tank or even just the big tank hits. It's the same thing, but you're just, it's more consistent, the mitigation that you need. All right, next question. Hey, Happy, been a while since I've asked the question, so here's one about Monk and the meta. All right, this is going to be a good one. Since Gordy Savage, everyone loves to hate on Monk when it comes to raiding due to its lack of utility. It does have Dragon Kick, but that's replaced with Delirium almost all the time, and Mantra loses its usefulness when people gear up. What utilities do you think they can give to a level 70 Monk? Uh, you know, one thing that's like, he's not even looking at Monk, just give another job blunt damage that's not like the Book Smacks or something. That immediately increases the synergy of it, because, I mean, you look at Dragoon. Dragoon gives two major things. One is the piercing debuff for a bard or machinist. If you don't have one, all of a sudden that utility isn't useful. Um, then it gives the crit buff, which is really good synergy with the other with uh, all of the other DPS. Everybody in the party benefits from that. So when you look at that, you need to, that seems to be the key to all jobs in this game. They need a utility that helps themselves and a specific range of other jobs and a utility that helps everyone. Monk technically has both those things, but neither of them compare to the ones that the other jobs offer. Uh, a good example of that would be Dragon Kick. No other blunt damage users that are feasible. Like, I mean, yeah, like I said, Book Smacks and stuff are, are blunt damage, but that doesn't count. So that's their supposed to be their, you know, their party, their limited party utility. And their full party utility, Mantra, like you said, it's just, it's, don't get me wrong, 25% more healing is fantastic, especially when you're progging. The problem is most people prefer to kill a boss faster than heal more. I mean, it's more like the thing, if you have a monk, make use of the mantra. But most people just 
end up trying not to have a monk. So I think hit those two points. Those two abilities don't need to change. They don't need anything on top of those two abilities. But those two abilities in particular are the ones that they need to hit to make it so people stop complaining like that about monk. Whether that means introducing another blunt damage user so there's some synergy with dragon kick and giving mantra something a little bit extra. Pull back on the healing and give it something else that makes it more valuable. If they just did that, then all of a sudden monk becomes valuable in a certain in I mean people are still going to min max and if it's not as if it's better than the other combination then this becomes the primary my number one thing is just don't care if you're not like world proc if you're somebody who's sitting in a group that's stuck on a10 savage this situation should sound familiar don't care about the composition because you can beat it with the gear that's available with like almost any composition a9 and a10 if you get to a11 and it's like something's wrong with the composition i could somewhat understand but even then with more than enough gear our group beat it with friggin white mage no astro at first then we had them switch to astro eventually in a12 savage and now it's fantastic and then we use double monk machinist and what's our last and black mage and everyone's like well summoner's better this tier dragoon's better ninja's better board of machinist kind of if it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> and our on our dark knight it was paladin for like the first three fights also it's like who cares just get good at the game and you don't need to worry about the composition as much people worry way too much about it that being said that's what i think they could do to monk to improve it those are the points i need to hit all right, we got the next question. Yay! You picked the question I hoped you would pick last week. I wanted this week to ask one question, but there are too many to ask. You know, it's weird, though, because when you ask them all and then I don't get to answer them, it's kind of weird. For cinematic experience against log-off fatigue, interesting, and it is everyone's desire to change the future. I'm going to go with this one because it's cool. When do you play Xenoblade? I'm not talking about streaming. Just, I don't. <laughs> and here's my thing. Nowadays, if I'm not streaming a game... I'm generally not playing a game unless I'm recording for YouTube. If I'm not recording for YouTube or streaming, I'm generally not playing a game. The exception to that is if I'm playing a game that I have been streaming, trying to like level up more. So when I stream it the next day, I can get through more of the game. A good example is that today I played Pokemon Moon and I wanted to do evolutions only for today. And so what I did was, late last night when I was playing, I was trying to get as many of the evolutions as possible, get them to a reasonable level, like within 20 to 30, level 20s to 30. And that way when I started today, it was good. And it worked out great. My, my Jolteon's now 51, I've got a Flareon at 47, I've got an Umbreon at 53, you know, all of those worked out really well. But I was, but I'm, you know, I'm only playing that game off stream. So when I play it on stream, it's easier to get through. So Xenoblade, if I don't stream it, I probably won't play it. I haven't played it before and I don't know when I'll play it. All right, next question. Hi, Haps. Quick question for you. I'll be the judge of that. I've been having this issue on my main character, always looking towards my target, which most of the time gets me killed. But I've noticed in your videos this doesn't happen. Is there an option where you can toggle the function? It sounds like you're just mashing buttons. When you want to turn away from an enemy, you can't keep pressing your skills. That'll make you turn around and face them. You have to turn around and stop using your skills. That seems to be the problem, because otherwise that won't happen. You literally, I literally just turn my character around, stop pressing buttons, bam, avoided. All right, next, oh, wow, this is, uh, okay, uh, sp separate spacing, <laughs> spacing would help with this next one, because it's like a brick of words. Greetings, Happy, first time posting a question, therefore I offer a bonus of a Louis Vuitton, a Louis Vuitton bag signed by Lightning. <sighs> I'll give it to Mel. As someone who has accompanied FF Countup and all of your experiences, opinions with Final Fantasy, I come with a few topics. Okay. One, during the Final Fantasy X episode, you mentioned that the expert grid made you stupidly overpowered. I tried expert, screwed up all my characters. You praised 13-2's Crystarium, but that was one of the reasons that made me want to game Dying of Fire. Only thing I enjoyed was the Lightning DLC. Well, what I really liked about 12, 13 and Lightning Return, simplicity and linear progression. While I relish... Uh, RPG, uh, while I relish complex RPGs, nine times out of ten I look up guides because I'm too scared to construct characters in a way that makes them a complete mess. What are your thoughts on systems like the Sphere Grid in the second iteration of the Crystarium, which proves interest and replayability for the cost of player mistake? It, you, the thing is, you never hit a point of player mistake where the game's not finishable. Like, it's always a temporary mistake that, over time, you will rectify. Like, there's no way to screw up the Sphere Grid, but what you could end up doing is everyone goes down the same path, and then you hit a boss where that path's not useful because you didn't separate them. What do you do? You go back a little bit, you grind out a few extra sphere grids, you put people on the other side of the grid. And also you have to, as a player, make a conscious decision not to send everybody down the same grid. You keep a little bit of variety in your group and you make sure that you play on that strength when it's needed. Um, I don't think, like, this isn't like, when I think of player, when I think of cost of player mistake, I think of Diablo, like, 1 and 2, where you start specking into the wrong things, you start putting on the wrong gear, all of a sudden you're just like... 
this was a mistake or even like path of exile where you're trying to make a build but you're not following somebody's build and you think you're doing the right thing and all of a sudden you realize well i didn't have enough ice resistance i didn't even know i was going to need it so then i just get two shotted by this mob and i was playing on hardcore so i'm fucked like those are like player cost mistakes the things you're talking about are completely fixable within the save file itself and aren't in any way going to completely break your save file and make it unplayable that will never happen Two, what are your thoughts on the current aspect of more present in JRPGs? Uh, like, most require some form of grinding that would consider menial and how most of the games feel like they need to include gimmicks such as monster capturing. As a former weebu, I tried to get into the genre, but those peculiarities always kept me away. They're trying to make it more interesting. You can't just do the same thing over and over and over again without changing something. Even Call of Duty will, like, just change, like, minor details here and there. Introduce a new gun, buff the, buff or nerf guns from the previous one. Like, you need some sort of, something that makes you stand out. Something that is isn't just I am going to press the attack button you are going to fall over you are weak to lightning I will press the lightning button you will fall over like that's not exhilarating that's not exciting gameplay that's repetitiveness and what you do is you add those gimmicks to reduce the feeling of repetitiveness if you're someone who feels like you need repetitive like really really need exactly the same thing the entire experience this generation of gaming is really not for you you're probably gonna have to find an indie game that doesn't try to innovate at all and just has a solid experience the entire way through three why do you enjoy super bosses i really i recently attempted the dark ants only feel that i had wasted 38 hours i spent in the arena and maxing the grid for three characters failing points to see that i enjoyed Aaron Knight and Arishkagal for they were uh beatable just before the final moments of the game without going out of your way to grind repeat just for stats well to be fair lightning returns is also regular i hate lightning returns as stats progression system the fact that you can't you it's you have to do menial side quests to power up your character on lightning returns i hate that also aaronite erishkagal pretty easy super bosses all things considered and they had completely separate cheese strats um it's all about prep like rpgs are all about information and preparation you learn what you can about the boss okay he petrifies me on hit what can I do to counter that? Okay, well, if I get ribbon, then none of those status effects matter at all. So I, I can eliminate that need at all. How hard does he hit me? Okay, he hits me for 5,000 a hit. Do I need protect? Can I just sacrifice characters? Does he have AOE? It's all about taking information and processing it. And super bosses just take that and make you nail it down to a T. You need, an ex you need a pretty precise strategy or at least one of a few precise strategies. Um, and that's what I like about it. I like the process of powering up your character to the point where, bam. Like, if you have a maxed out grid, that's not going to save you against the Dark Aeons because you don't have ribbon on your gear. You don't have auto potion or auto protect or auto hate. Like, I don't even remember what the combination is at this point. But that's what it's all about. It's about being fully prepared, not just over-leveling things. And that's what I like about super bosses. All right, next question. Hey, Happy, job crafting questions? This is a bad idea. I'll see if I can even answer these. Last week you mentioned the end of the answer. The Square Enix community should just uh, look... F oh, you mean, like, upgrading jobs. You don't mean, like, crafting jobs. You mean job crafting, like, as a... Yeah. For excuses to mix jobs and abstract concepts should be combined where they make sense. However, a long-standing idea I've had is that mixing Beastmaster and Blue Mage as they themselves have rather limited concepts, but also have a commonality revolving around monsters. Yeah, I've, I've said that. I've also said Beastmaster could literally combine with the idea of a druid, and a Beastmaster could turn into a druid. The thing is, um, combining Beastmaster and Blue Mage, that's kind of strange to me. Because, yeah, they both have the common theme of both involving monsters one involves controlling monsters one involves using their skills so if you're controlling a monster why do you also need to use its skills do you want to control one so you can use the other one's skills that's a good combination in theory but they need to be combinations that are also that also feasibly work and is that something that's feasible within 50 i'm sorry not 15 final fantasy 14 where i even have a choice i probably don't even have a choice at that point because there is going to be a combination that is clearly meta and that's going to be what it falls on. So it might be interesting in theory, but that's something that's not as interesting in an MMO like Final Fantasy XIV, unless it's executed on in such a structured way that you kind of wonder why you wanted Beastmaster and Blue Mage com combined in the first place. That's how I feel of it. If we do get Blue Mage, I really don't think we will. I want the Toad's tongue pull, the Beast's final sting. In the back. See, that's the thing, though. Like, that's not going to happen. Like, you're not just going to get monster abilities in Final Fantasy XIV because there needs to be a reason. Like, I could understand tongue pull, Final Sting is never going to happen because that's just, that's never going to be meta. And Bad Breath, debuffs don't really do anything. Like, that's the problem in Final Fantasy XIV with releasing a Blue Mage. What do you do that is reasonable? If I learn enemy skills, what enemy skills are even reasonable to have to the point where I can actually use them against bosses? Because the majority of skills are either single target, AoE, and they're like a play, like, you know, the AoE marker on the ground, 
And they all do, they either do damage or they knock back. And for us, they might silence us, but that doesn't do anything against bosses. Like, it does against a few, but it's very limited. So, that's the problem I have with Blue Mage. That's why I don't think we'll see them in Final Fantasy XIV, at least not as, like, a monster learning job. I just think it's not a good job to try and put into our MO. That only works in Eleven because they don't give a fuck about balance in that game. Like, fuck it, just add everything, whatever. I don't, we don't care. Just people, it's Final Fantasy, just who cares? All right, next question. Hello, Herr Froch. That's German in case no one... You, I can't pronounce German. Dude, come on, man. Froch. Froch. Herr Froch. I don't know. I'm just fucking making dinosaur noises. The first one is a serious question about addiction. Your addiction. So what's your current playtime and your main character, 14? I don't know, because I leave that character... Like, when the expansions launch or when new patches launch, a lot of times I don't log that character out. And I used to leave it, like, literally logged in for like months on end so i don't know what the real play time is i think what's registered on that character is over 400 days and then a uh, question uh what kind of setting and or scenario would you like to see in a future expansion i want to just i want to go to garla mold at some point like i want to see what they want what they would do with us actually going to the continent where garla mold is on because that's dangerous man <laughs> that's a dangerous place to go so I, I'm, I'm down with that i'm just worried people are going to complain about like the, the steampunk thing like they did with alexander because i'd imagine it'd be very steampunk ish we'll see how that works out though all right, next question. Hey, Happy. Hope all is well and that you're enjoying Cali. I have two questions, one sort of personal, the other 14 related. Kinda. I haven't watched or posted in a while ongoing family issues. I'd really like to move, possibly, to Cali. I know you moved from New Jersey and I would be moving from New York. I was wondering how difficult was the move and while you don't have to go into personal finances, how expensive was it? So if you live in New York, I'm, I, you're not being very specific. I don't know if you mean upstate New York. I don't know if you mean New York City, Long Island. I don't, I don't know what you mean. So first of all, that's difficult. But New York is very expensive. California is also very expensive. So there are places you can find out in California that are off in the middle of fucking nowhere that are not like in a city, like they're not in San Diego, they're not in San Francisco, they're not in Los Angeles. You can get those for a reasonable price. Um, but if you want to live very close or in one of the major cities, you're going to be, I mean, New York and California, they're pretty similar in their pricing. You probably get bigger space in California for a better price, but it's still going to run you a lot of money. Um, and then when it comes to how difficult it is, I'm not someone who likes to, like, whenever I, I, I move items, I tend to leave things, I, I, that's when I do, like, item management, and I go, okay, what can I leave, what don't I need, what am I bringing for no reason, like, what do I just have that is just riffraff and I can throw it away, that's what I do when I move, so when I moved out here, I packed my computer, I packed clothes, I packed some personal belongings, and, uh, like, and then my peripherals for, like, I literally just brought my computer plus clothes. Like, that's the majority of what I brought. So for me, it was really easy because I wasn't worried about furniture. If you're not worried about furniture, then, and you can buy it when you get there, then the move's not that bad. But, uh, I just gotta say it's nerve-wracking. I did lose a box of, like, collector's editions for, like, for, like, Kingdom Hearts and stuff. Like, it was just a box full of collector's editions. Never made it. So that was shitty. So you do have to worry about that. You have to decide how much of it you're shipping ahead, how much of it you're bringing with you or checking it on the plane. I highly recommend bringing some of the more valuable things if they're not too big with you physically and not doing what I did. That was bad. So uh, that was probably the worst part. My other possibly more uplifting question is, do you think Terrains gets enough feedback from player-created generated job ideas that they would think about adding it to the game? So no. <laughs> to put that frankly, no. They're not going to look at a player-made idea and go, yes. I mean, maybe they go, we were thinking of something like that, and they kind of play off the idea, but they're, they're never going to watch one of my videos about Puppet Master, or about Red Mage, or about Blue Mage, or whatever job video I'm doing, and go, yes, we're going to do that. They might have similar ideas, and it might you might be able to draw that conclusion, like, oh, that's just like that idea you had. Maybe they thought that. No. They got their own process. They don't care. They don't want to consider that because then they have to then they have to consider everybody's. And that's like an open door. And if they ever told us, yeah, we read the forums for job ideas, <sighs> we are doomed. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. Um, and like, I have a very passionate idea about Geomancy too, but it's like, we we don't work for them. That's the bottom line. They will see how many people are interested in the Like if a thousand people made a thread about Geomancer, they would be like, wow, there's a lot of threads about Geomancer. People must really like it. They're not going to say, 
yeah, let's make the job like one of these threads. Let's like cherry pick ideas out of these threads and make them work together. That's just not how it works. They have their own development process and we are not a part of that. We may help determine what they develop, but not how or when they develop it. That's the most important thing to realize. Uh, I love your feedback. If you remain unbiased, uh, regardless of the link, I will post on the forums. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't read the whole like, I don't, I don't do the whole, I have this idea, I want you to read it thing. Because everyone, if I do that, then it opens doors to everyone. And I have no feedback on it because I'm not a developer. Developer. I can't give you feedback on a job idea because it doesn't matter. Like, it's not going to make it exist anymore. It's not going to, you can't make it better because it's not, it's just your idea. Like, I can't improve it because it's not going to get implemented anywhere unless you make a game yourself. So, if you want, if you're going to make a game yourself and you want my feedback, maybe I can help you. But not with an idea for Final Fantasy 14 where we have no pull. All right, next question. I think we're about halfway done with the forum questions. Hi, Mr. Happy. If Twitch was around during Final Fantasy XI's heyday, would we have seen many people streaming XP parties? That would have been a lot of fun. You know, we might have seen people streaming that most boring piece of content possible. You know what we wouldn't be streaming? H&M camping. <laughs> for two reasons. One, who the fuck wants to sit there for three hours and be like, Dad, Windows in 25 minutes, so, uh, so, uh, I guess I'll play Peggle while we're waiting. And also, oh shit, time of death. I didn't know that. Every link show in the fucking server. We're going there. Now. Yeah, I'll pass. And EXP parties aren't exactly... I probably would have done it. I don't see I don't see why I wouldn't have done it. It just would have been dumb. <laughs> it would have been boring. Be like, thank you guys for keeping me sane while I EXP. This is just... The t I, uh, I don't care if it's... Cali I don't care if I chain 200 on Calibris. That doesn't make it more exciting. That just makes it even more monotonous. Because I've been doing it for like three hours now. Okay. All right. Thank you for keeping me sane. By the way, chat. Oh, yeah. That's how I feel that would go. All right. Next question. Hey, Mr. H. Not a first time poster, but I'm feeling generous. So I have a three line book for Chloe. I have a question regarding Aquapolis and the upcoming expansion. As it is, the Aquapolis currently sits with the level 60 maps. Do you think they'll move it to 70? No, I think, they, I think they should do a new version of the Aquapolis at 70. I think it's fine that the Aquapolis maps are 60. And, that's, and what's also fine about that is that when level 70 is the cap, they can still keep Aquapolis relevant without moving it to 70. Because the same thing kind of happens with all of the mid-tier maps. Like, some, a lot of them end up with, like, pretty decent, like, one or two really decent rewards for money. Because not everyone's doing them. Everyone wants to do the new hotness. And they're looking at the old ones like they're old and busted. But they're not because they got, like, one drop that sells for, like, 300k. And then people just do that map. And they're like, all right, fucking nobody knows. Nobody's doing this shit. So here you go. I, I will be the supply. You be the demand. And, uh, no, I don't think they... I think they'd be better making a new version. Um, I wish... Do you wish the Aquapolis was solo? I think we've had, the, with the introduction of Palace of the Dead, we really don't need to keep introducing solo content. And Aquapolis, to me... I'm not opposed to a solo version of the Aquapolis. I'm opposed to dedicating to make it soloable. Like, the Aquapolis we have now. It'd be fine if they were like, oh, let's make the level 60 solo maps have, the, like, the Wyvern skins. Let's give the Wyvern skins their own version of the Aquapolis. It's not as hard, and the rewards aren't nearly as good, and it has the same whole RNG factor, and then that one's solo and this one's group. The problem with that is then the, the solo one is the one that tanks in price because everyone's like, well, fuck it, I don't want to play with other people. And then nobody does that and it's because it's not worth anything. And then nobody's doing the party ones because they're all too nervous to do the party ones because they don't want to talk to other people or have to trust other people. And it ends up it's kind of messed up and all over the place. That's my opinion on it at least. All right, next question. Hey there, Mr. Happy. First time poster to the questions thread. I'm not sure what you currently need in game, so I have a steak. We had st we just talked about steak nachos earlier too. Now you're giving me a steak. Now I need the nachos. Okay. My question is probably a tad different from the ones you usually get. I've been playing for a while, but tend to be on the casual side. I played in 1.0. Ouch. I'm glad you said it and I didn't have to. I've been playing for a while, but tend oh, I've read that already. Level a few jobs to 50. I've been avoiding these jobs in the current game due to my lack of knowledge. A lot of guys I've read some up to memorize these long ass rotations without much explanation. Here's my question. After listening to the latest Taylor, I'm talking about getting angry with high-level players not knowing their jobs. Where do I go to practice playing these 50s? All you really need to do, go find a training dummy and practice the rotations that you're reading about. That's it. You don't yes, it's not it's not practical knowledge. It's more like just a it, it lets you practice the uh, the 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 muscle memory of doing your rotations. It doesn't actually teach you how to do them while you're fighting a boss, but that's your best bet. 
just go to the training dummy and then you're good to go. Uh, what would you consider a really good guide? So there's no one good guide. Every guide out there is going to boil down to here's your opener. Here's how you maintain damage over the fight. Here's a few things that you should know about the job. That's what it all comes down to. And usually the start of the guide is also these are what abilities do for people who have no idea. Like if you watched, if you read Creator's Machinist Guide, that's a good example where he breaks down everything. He even describes the little tiny things that maybe you don't want to know, but it's good to know. And they will definitely help improve your play. So, um... I mean, the guides you've read are probably fine. I imagine they're probably along the lines of, like, Creator's Guide, but just make sure that you're educating yourself and that you're practicing on the dummies. And then go into dungeons and try to practice, and don't expect to be perfect, because, listen, if you can do half of your rotation, you're better than a lot of the Duty Finder. And those people that aren't that, they're going to be like, damn, that person's really good. And you're just going to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. And they're just going to be like, wow, and you're that good? And you're going to be like, yeah, I am that good. I still need to get better. But yeah, I am that good. Let me get better. There you go. Also, read tooltips. Use logic. I like my chat's recommendation. Uh, I may one day work up to rating and such for now. Lack of time. Can't do that. Just got to practice. All right, and next question. How you doing? Yo, how you doing? Hey, happy Thanksgiving three or four days from now. Take pie of your chat. You know, I'm not a big pie guy. Not a big pie guy. I'll do like, uh, I'll do I'll do a savory pie, but yeah, I'll, I'll, how about that? I'll do some sort of savory pie. Quick question, potentially a long answer. Who exactly is Rowena? So this is something that you should ask Ephes, because I actually, I, I've spoken about who Rowena and the Favnarians are before, not in a video though. I've like spoke about it on my stream, but it's always been like half-assed because I don't really educate myself about Rowena's history. Like I didn't do the Kettle Quest, so I don't know the exact dialogue for that and that's a big part of Rowena and Geralt I would ask Ethis that question not me because he is the he him or Anonymous are the lore guys not me I know some things but not a lot of things all right next question hey Mr. Happy this is Final Sim and welcome to my question on your channel consistent. First of all, to be clear, in last week's Monday's Mr. Happy, you said that it took my static three weeks to clear Nine Savage since I told you it took 10 days for us to clear. I said 10 days. I included the days we were not playing. It actually took us four game days to clear. See, that's the thing. You gotta be very clear about that. As for the question, here goes. I play Paladin in my static, and I feel like I do a good job tanking and handling mechanics, but I feel like my DPS is kind of low in comparison to other Paladins. A25 and A9 Savage, not that bad. Some Paladins don't even pull like three, don't even pull like four or five hundred. So, you're not as bad as you think you are. Yes, it could be higher, but it can always be higher. I see people main tank the boss with Sword Oath and still maintain hate. How do they do that? Uh, a lot of the times that comes with synergy with uh, with a ninja. Like, if you don't have a ninja in your group, doing that's not reasonable. You normally need to spend a lot more time in uh, in Shield Oath. And another big part of that is the uh, is the third wave. You really just need to last till the third wave when everybody stops hitting the boss to kill Faust. And even though, you're t even though he's taking less damage, the enemy you're generating there is still something that isn't, you know it's helping to some degree so that's a big thing ninja the use of their enmity skills consistently throughout the fight um also enmity dropping skills things like uh how do i say like things like shroud of saints because your healers are most most likely to pull off of you um yeah i mean it, it's it's a little tough i don't remember you saying if you had a ninja or not but that's going to be the first thing also you might want to start in shield oath don't start in sword oath you start in Shield Oath, you get a little bit of Enmity, and then you switch the and then you switch the Sword Oath, and then you also have the Ninja doing the whole Shade Walker smokescreen thing. Make sure your Black Mages are using Quelling Strikes. They better not be assholes not using them. Summoners too. Um, same with Bards, Machinists. When it comes to Monk, there's not much they can do. You can sh you can smokescreen them, but that's about it. Um, or they can not hit the boss. But <laughs> you're not gonna ask a Monk to not hit the boss. You're crazy. Um, and then healers, they have whatever enmity reducing skills each of them have. Scholar just generally doesn't generate a whole lot, so I don't need to really worry about them. But that's what it is. That's all it is. All right, next question. Hey, Mr. Happy127. I wanted to ask if this was a Transformers thing until I realized it was actually 217, I think. Anyways, I think I have a hearty, have a hearty Reese's Cup filled with Smart Ill. That does not sound good. Reese's Cup smells filled with Smarties. Does that, First of all, you just gave me diabetes by typing that. Second of all, that does not sound good. Sorry, my question is kind of rambly, so maybe read before answering. Eh, we'll see. Maybe I'll just edit it out. What would your thoughts be on the following? I think you said before you don't like to answer these kind of questions, but I was curious. No pressure if you want to skip. All right, let me determine that by actually reading, because sometimes these what are your thoughts things are not that bad. It's mostly like, I have an idea. What do you think? Or what do you think of a concept is a little bit different. Um, three or four bosses. You can kill them all right off the bat. 
kill the first one grants int resistance buff no i mean so basically what you're asking me is what do i think about bosses that are like turn two maybe you weren't playing back in turn two but this is very similar to this description right here where you have multiple enemies and when you kill them it buffs and changes the abilities of the final boss use i actually really like turn two for that i did obviously the enrage strat made that pretty irrelevant but um i like ideas like that where it's not just one boss and then the fight goes and whatever happens i really like turn two because if you had monks then you try to avoid going down the blunt resistance if you had you know if you wanted to make sure your tanks could generate enmity properly you generally tried to avoid the slashing one um if you had you know a black mage or a summoner then you had to choose and then based on your composition you had to choose well who's going to do more damage who's going to do less damage the bard they just need to silence they can get the piercing debuff that's a good example you know um there's also examples as my chat has brought up examples of that like uh like ulduar so uh, from world of warcraft so I, I like bosses like that they're not they're not bad it's very difficult to make those bosses engaging in the long run but they don't have to be and i think we realize that now with the creator savage that you don't need to have a boss that takes weeks and weeks and weeks to figure out beat it could still be a good raid tier without that so yeah i'm cool with that idea um wasn't that bad of a what idea you know what do you think of this idea question because it's been done before i can relate it to something in game and talk about my experience with it that that makes it not that bad of a question all right, next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. Quick question about 15. Final Fantasy 15. Can't wait. Okay. Uh, do you know if we will get any party members other than Prompto, Ignis, and Gladiolus? Yes, uh, we will be getting guest party members. We know Core is one of them, and they've shown off other guest party members. I just don't remember their names right now. Um, there you go, guest party members. Uh, no no more permanent party members, though. Like, the, the entire game is supposed to be about their journey together. And so, no, those are your other... They are your permanent party members. Um... So yeah, that's it. That's the whole question. Short question. Awesome. Moving on. On and as I said, on to the next question. Hey, Mr. Happy. Uh, the question relates to the 4.0 trailer with two monks. High five. You're a winner in my book. Something I noticed at the end. I was watching the trailer and it reaches the end. Bring up the title screen. Uh, the upper right corner. There's something flying around the air that looks awfully familiar. I decided this was a great time to watch at this video for the hundredth time. It wasn't until I watched at this video where he narrates or exploits through the binding coils of Muhammad. I knew I'd seen that silly one before. That flying creature trailer looks awfully like an awful lot like the Phoenix from Coil. Dude, now I gotta pull up. I think I have this saved on my computer somewhere, this exact image you're talking about. Uh, man, I don't know. I got to find it now. You, you're killing me, dude. You just gave me a question that, like, completely stopped all other trains of train of thought. Like, I got I to gotta see that image. I could just Google it. Why am I, why am I digging through my files when I could literally just Google this? Um, because I thought I had a folder that was labeled 4.0. I think I do somewhere. But anyway, Stormblood logo. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, there seems to be something flying. It, you're right. It does. It it does indeed look an awfully lot like the Phoenix. I'll you know, I'll give you that. It does. It could be. It's hard to tell because like half of the silhouette is is it's black and it's black and orange or red or I'm colorblind. Just correct me. I don't give a crap at this point. It's like it's the color of the flames and it's black and it's like the black is on the black and the, some of the the flame is on the flame and it's hard to tell. But I definitely agree that it does indeed look like Phoenix. So I will not take that from you. I, I'm, I don't want to believe that's gonna. The thing is, Alice is around. So no, they can't be. It could be something that is a palette swap of the Phoenix. I have a hard time believing that. But I don't know, man. I don't even know what to think about that. You just, I didn't even notice it. Like that's, it's because I'm colorblind. It blended so well. I just, I was so focused about everything else happening there that i didn't even notice that so uh it's possible that it's a, it's a teaser to some sort of other summon um but i can't i can't give you a definitive answer it's just uh it's i thank you for noticing it's literally phoenix so i don't know what to say <laughs> All right, next question. Hi, Mr. Happy. First time poster, so have 200 red gatherings. That's a really weird thing to choose, considering I, never, I don't really gather much anymore either, but thank you. I want to start doing Savage using the Raid Finder, as my schedule is, is too irregular to get a static. I currently have I-252 Scholar. I don't have any accuracy melts. It's like crit and spell speed. I'd rather not replace my melts. Okay, this is a big thing I said. As soon as you decide you want to start raiding, the whole mentality of, I'd rather not do this, you kind of need to throw that mentality out of the window in the first place because i'd rather not do this doesn't help you beat a fight being willing to do something that's different like for example like hey scholar how would you feel about main healing and we let the white mage do all the dps and if you and 
that's we're going to do that differently. You could say, I don't really think that's optimal, but if everybody's voting against you, you'll be like, all right, well, I'm willing to do it. Because if you just keep fighting it, you're just wasting, you, people are getting angsty, people are, and then you go, okay, let's try for a few polls, see how it works, and uh, if it's better DPS or it's better on MP, then sure, we'll do it. I'm not saying do that, but the whole point is as soon as there's an idea or as soon as there's something that a group wants to try or something that can better help your chances, like, that's like saying, Oh, I have 2 million gil, but I'd rather not buy food and pots. It's like, why? You said you wanted to raid. You want to, you want to win, right? Like, that's the point. At this point, and that's what it seems like here. You're not raiding just for fun. You're raiding because you want to beat the fights. And don't get me wrong, those fun can be with that. But you need to understand that that mentality of I'd rather not do it um, is probably, is, is not the right one. Even if you have a reason, I don't like the idea of having accuracy on my gear that would be useless in other content. That's fine. I get that. But that's if as soon as you start raiding, that's the content you're gearing for. All other content doesn't need any melds, in all honesty. The closest thing you need to melds might be extreme primals. Even then, debatable. You really don't need melds to beat anything. So saying that you don't like it because it doesn't it's useless in other content, I'm not saying crit's useless in other content. I'm just saying my paladin's I242. I don't give a shit about the job. I got no melds. I'll still pull the whole fucking I'll still pull the whole fucking dungeon and be fine. You know what I mean? Could it be doing more deeps? Sure. Do I care? It's a four-man dungeon. Hell no, I don't care. I care when I get to the raids. So that's what I feel like. You care when you get to the raids, and that's what you gear your character around as soon as you make the decision you want to do it. So I would say, get the accuracy melts. That's the number one thing I'd say. If anything, do it slowly. Get the materia through Palace of the Dead. Get it through the Weeping City every week. You know, pick up materia from things like Aquabolus. Like, get it through ways that don't cost you gil. But I would still try to, or, or I'm sorry, even Beast Tribe dailies. Go get Accuracy Melt, uh, Great Force from Beast Tribe dailies. And work your way towards that. That way it doesn't cost you gil. Hell, you might even make some gil in the process. Uh, but actually, I just noticed as I was scrolling down, this is actually the last question uh, that's on the forum. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to grab a few questions from the live Twitch chat. And then we're going to wrap up this video. So, live Twitch chat. I have closed the forum questions. Go for it. All right, so the first question I have, uh, it says, hey, oops, <laughs> just scrolled down past it. Hey, Hap, so here's a question. How are you preparing for the massive player fall off coming past 3.5? Considering how quick this raid tier has gone and the lack of replayable features, except for Tuesday Night Clears, and I'll also add in Palace of the Dead. And well, that, it's actually a lot. Like, I log in to do Wondrous Tales, Palace of the Dead, Aquapolis. I'll log in to do the majority of things. I just have to ask myself if there's something else I'd rather play instead, and that's going to be part of my answer. I think Square Enix is going to release something worth playing. So I think we'll, we'll have, in 3.55, we'll probably have Proto Ultima. We'll have another continuation of the main story. But I don't see them adding much other than making the game more accessible for the people who are more casually playing. Like, in 3.58, they'll probably get rid of weekly raid tiers. They'll pro I mean, they'll probably get rid of... Um, weekly lockouts for everything they'll probably double the scripture cap or something like they did last time the way i prepare for player fall off is i'm part of the fall off i play other games while i'm waiting for it to come out i mean we're, so we're looking at the first half of 2017 right that's when we're going to see it because 3.5 yes we're going to have die we're going to have exploratory mission 2.0 yes we're going to have live letters yes we're going to have fan festivals we're going to have plenty of information to get excited about but we don't need to be playing all the time this is what i say all the time there's no need to be playing the game all the time what am i doing right now i'm playing pokemon sun and moon could i be working on my solo pals of the dead getting back up past floor 111 absolutely could i be working on getting a group together to get back to floor 200 absolutely could i be working on getting to at least 100 million gil before the expansion which is one of my goals i absolutely could but i looked at what my game library was and i said i want to play pokemon i'm not going to sit here and force myself to play final fantasy 14. i have these goals i could work on but i'm more interested in catching up on my game library it's a dumb thing to tell people don't play Final Fantasy XIV as part of as part as part of your prep. But if you're not leveling a job, you're not trying to beat the raid. The more you force yourself to play, hell, by the time Stormblood even comes out, you're gonna be playing it so much to the point where you're probably gonna get sick of it anyway. So I'd rather when I you know I don't force myself to play months and months and months of Final Fantasy XIV leading up to Stormblood because then I'm gonna be playing months and months and months of Final Fantasy XIV again and then you get burned out and they're just like oh that was too much. I'm going to be playing other games as part of my prep for 4.0. I'm going to be playing Kingdom Hearts 2.8. I'm going to be playing Kingdom Hearts the remasters on in March. I'm going to be playing uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. I'm going to play Persona 5, which is in April now. God damn it. It keeps getting pushed back, and I hate it. But it actually works out because now I have a lot more time. And what I don't even know what else is coming out in like May or June. And you know what? Probably towards the actual launch, I will play more. 
but I'm not going to force myself to do that in the 3.5 vault. I'm going to play 3.5, I'm going to beat everything in it, I'm going to check out Exploratory Mission 2.0, and then I'm going to lay out what are the games I'm going to be playing for the next six months, because I already know that's going to be part of the process anyway. All right, so the next question I'm probably unqualified to answer, but I'm going to try anyway. Hey, Apps, a question then. How do I get the motivation to do something else besides gaming? Because I'm usually attached to gaming too much and seriously want to break. So I was better at this back in college. And it was to make, the way I did it back in college to get away from gaming was to make other things more accessible. Like, do you live near a gym? Like, if you live very close to a gym, then the amount of time it takes to go from where you live to the gym is limited. And yes, you could say, oh, but if the gym's a mile away, I could jog there. And you know what? That's a great thing to tell yourself. But when you're addicted to gaming, you need things close by because that is one of the big reasons why addiction stays addiction is because the source of the addiction is so close and it's closer than all the other options. I mean, that's, that's not even gaming addiction. That's all addictions. Alcohol addiction, you keep a bunch of alcohol nearby. Of course you're gonna drink it because it's right there. You're an alcoholic, you know what I mean? Cigarettes, you keep them in your pocket. Of course, oh, I need a cigarette, bam, done. You know, the other interests that are out, that are farther away than said thing. You know, if you wanna start working out, buy buy a buy a, like a set of weights for your home and don't just buy the set of weights because even then you're still more attracted to gaming than you are like working out for example you put them closer to you than the video games <laughs> you make it so you got to walk past those things every day if you want to get because then you look at them and you go yeah you know what absolutely put them right put them right by your bedside put them on the if you have game on one side of the room put them on the other side of the room closer to the door do something like that you know what I mean? You gotta make sure that the things that you wanna do that are different are closer to access. Even if that means somebody else has to tell you, fuck no, you're not going in there. Like, lock the door, they lock the door, they throw away the key. I don't care if they gotta swallow the key and you gotta wait till they poop it out to get it back to get into that room. That's what you gotta do. You gotta make sure that you're either locking yourself away from it or somebody else is in charge of locking away from it or you make the other thing that, you're, that you want to start doing more accessible. You just, because if you have to tell yourself, well, I'm going to drive 20 minutes to go rock climbing. Great. You did the rock climbing once. You're like, I would love to do that more. I guarantee you, you end up getting home and you end up relaxing or you get really into a game for like one week and that completely shuts itself off. So that's what I'm saying. You got, you got to make it so that you fall into a habit and that that habit is not gaming. And how do you do that? You make this other thing more accessible. I don't remember. Mel told me, I think it takes 28 days to form a habit. So you have to you have to literally like just say I'm going to do it and create the willpower that you need. Shut yourself out from the games. Tell yourself that games are shit. Read shit on the forums and make it go, you know what that game is? They said the game is shit. I'm not going to play it. There you go. You just saved yourself $60 and you can go spend that on something that is not gaming. It's tough. I'm not good at it at all. The reason why I said I was not qualified for the answer to this question at the beginning, I'm not good at. I used to be good at it in college. In college, I had my, you know, I had my uh my dorm room and I played games there like I literally I platinum Skyrim in 87 hours in the first eight days it came out I spent 87 hours playing that game in the first eight days and I still worked out on those days do you know why it was so easy the gym was in the basement of the building so you know what every day I had to go to class I'd come back to class I had to walk past that gym every time there's no reason for me to not go into that gym it was accessible and it was honestly I no matter what I had to go past it. I had to do it. That's why I was in good shape back then. That's why I'm not in good shape now, even though I have a gym a mile away that I have a membership to. I don't go that mile because you know what? My games are one minute <laughs> or not even one minute. They're like one meter away. So it's entirely different. It's, uh, and also Mel has another good thing. You have to make friends for, uh, for things that aren't gaming. <laughs> you need friends that don't just play video games because they're enablers. That's another big part of it. And yes, it's the super difficult thing to do. Yes, like, I can't just make friends that aren't gamers. That's what I know. That's like walking into a sports bar and being like, well, fuck baseball. Who wants to be my friend? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not going to work. You are what you surround, you, you, you adapt to what you surround yourself with. So I do agree with that point as well. It's, it's tough, man. It's, it's tough. But uh, it takes willpower and it takes effort. That's the number one thing. It takes more power, it takes effort. It's number one thing other than all those other things that I just listed. So I'm, uh, I'm fucked. I just play games all the time. All right, it took a while to find another question for from the Twitch chat, but I'm going to take this one. I'm going to make this the last question for Mondays with Mr. Happy because it involves something that I've been uh, 
that I've been playing for the last three days. It's Pokemon. Mr. Happy, so you said you haven't played Pokemon since Gold and Silver. And that's true. This Gen 7 Pokemon that I'm playing right now, I have not played Pokemon since Gen 2. So everything in between, completely new to me. All these Pokemon that pop up and someone's like, why the fuck is he using fire against this fire water type Pokemon? I'm like, I don't fucking know he's fire water. He literally looks like a made up creature that has no relevance to our world. And I have no idea he's 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 fire water until he hits me with a fire with a fire or a water uh, spell or skill or whatever. And so that's been the majority of my experience is somebody throws a Pokemon at me and I go, what the fuck is that? Are those, is that a keychain? And then somebody goes, yeah, it's steel fairy type. And I'm like, what the fuck is even, what is a fairy? Clefairy? And like, yeah, Clefairy's a fairy type now too. I don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> I've not played this game. When I played, these like dark and steel were just being, being introduced. Now we got fucking, now Geodude is lightning and rock. If anything, the first gym taught me is that only sprinklers should work in this in this scenario. I have no idea what's going on. So basically, it's been a giant learning experience with this new game of learning five generations worth of Pokemon and attacks. And I don't care about IVs, EVs, DMVs. I don't care. None of that matters to me. I want to play a game and have fun. And that is lost somewhere with Pokemon Sun and Moon for me. That being said... The game itself still plays like the old ones. It's got new things like, you know, the team battles and whatnot. That was new, I think, in Gen 3. The whole, like, two-on-two -two battles. But that's... It doesn't... Like, none of that matters to me. All that matters to me is, is it fun to play? Do I like collecting the Pokemon? Do I like the turn-based combat? And the answer to all three of those is yes. The story drags on a little bit much, but it's nice to have, like, a dedicated story. And I think they've had that since, like, Gen 3. But people have, like, had different pros and cons for, like, all the stories. Yes, Gens 1 and 2 had stories. Let, let, let's, let's be real here. Let's, let's be real. They weren't real stories, all right? It was, like a, it was like your rival shows up every three hours, and then he's like, fuck you. And then you fight him. And then there's a gym, and then you fight him again, and there's gym, you fight him again, and then eventually it's like Team Rocket. Oh no! And you go into the base, and there's a legendary in there, it's a Master Ball, and you win. All right, that's that was the whole story. This is like full blown cutscenes, text. It took me 30 minutes before I got my starter Pokemon. It's 30 minutes. I was like, when is this gonna be Pokemon? <laughs> And even still, story was okay. This whole calling for help thing is awful. Whoever thought of that, fire that guy. I don't care if it's better for shiny farming. I'm not going to shiny farm. Stop it. Final Fantasy 15 comes out soon. So, on that note, I like Sun and Moon. It's pretty good. And that's going to be the last question that I answer for Mondays with Mr. Happy when it comes to this week. Uh, thank you for asking your questions, both on the forums and on the live Twitch chat. Remember, if you have a video question, it's uh, the... The email for video questions is in the description of the YouTube video. If you have a question that you would like to write to me, write it on the forums. Those are also in the description of the video. Or you can show up live for the Twitch chat, which I, uh, I do every Sunday. So next week, Monday with Mr. Happy, will be November 28th. It will be the day before Final Fantasy XV launches. I don't even know how to believe that this is happening. But it is. One last time, questions, or not even questions, videos under the, at the bottom of the video. There's a videoception every time I have to do that. And that's why I just, words. I don't words. I just don't words. But um, yeah, that's going to be a wrap for this week. I'm going to hang out for a few more minutes over on the Twitch live stream just to wrap up like I normally do there. But for the YouTube side of things, thank you for joining me. I will see you next week. And until then, take care.